Okay, so here we go. Everything that you will see on your test. Coterminal angles are how far apart? 360 degrees. So what's 360 more than 258? What's 360 less than 258? So are these two angles coterminal? To figure it out, they're more, these are obviously more than 360 degrees apart, right? So it's either 360 degrees apart or a multiple of 360 degrees apart, okay? So are they 360 apart? No. Are they 720 apart? No. Are they 1080 apart? Yes. So are they coterminal? Yes. Okay, 332, what quadrant is it in? Four, because it's between 270 and 360. Convert these to decimal degrees. What do you do with the 43? Divide by 60, turn it into a decimal. What's 43 over 60? To four decimal places. 0. 0.7167. Seven one six seven. Divide that by sixty. Point five six one nine. Okay, round into four decimal places. So if we divide by sixty to go that direction, when we have a decimal, what do we do? Multiply by sixty. So it's thirty three degrees, and then sixty times two is. 0.212, and then there's zero seconds in this one because it was a whole number. If it's not a whole number, then you have to figure out the seconds part. Converting it to radians. Well, we would multiply by pi over 180 here, or we just look at our unit circle. What is it at 210 on your unit circle? 7 pi over 6. 3 pi over 2, how many degrees is that from your unit circle? What? 270. Oh, I thought you said 350. It's like, what? I know it. All right, 3 pi over 5. If you're going to add 2 pi to this, because 2 pi is 360 degrees, you, exactly, Alexandra, you add 10 pi over 5. Because 2 pi is the same as 10 pi over 5, so you get 13 pi over 5. Okay? And then, if you take 13 pi over 5 plus another 10 pi over 5, what do you get? 23 pi over 5. Which one has those two? D. Okay, what's pi over 3 in standard position? Well, you're going this direction around, okay? So it is A, okay? Because you're going clock counterclockwise. When it's a negative, this would be a negative angle. This is a positive angle. Okay, arc length. Arc length when you're given trig is just the angle times the radius. What's pi over 3 times 18? 6 pi, okay? Area of the sector. Area of the sector when you're in this is theta r squared over 2. So it's pi over 3 times 24 squared divided by 2. 24 squared, so it's pi over 3 times 576, I think, divided by 2. Well, 576 divided by those, what, is about... 144 and then divided by 3 so it's 96 pi is what this is because first you have to divide by 3 here to cancel those two out and 576 divided by 3 is 192 right and then 192 divided by 2 is 96 pi okay all right cancel where you can 
Radiance cancels with Radiance. Minutes with minutes. He ends up with revolutions per hour. Okay? 17 times 60 divided by 2 pi. Do not type in 17 times 60 divided by 2 pi. Take 17 times 60, press equals, press divided by 2, press equals, press divided by pi, press equals. 162.3, okay, revolutions per hour. Windmill, electricity, 30 feet long. Guess what? When you do an angular velocity, the 30 feet long does not matter. We're changing 85 revolutions per second to radians per second. How do we change revolutions into radians? One revolution is equal to 2 pi radians. So it's just 85 times 2 pi. Now it says round to the nearest tenth, so you're actually hitting the pi button on your calculator. Five thirty four point one. All right. Now here we're gonna go down here so we have room to write. Okay? Saw blade, thirty three hundred revolutions per minute. All right, so now we want to go miles per hour. So what do we get rid of first? We get rid of revolutions, right? How many pi are in a revolution? Two pi radians in a revolution. Now, how do I get rid of radians? The radius. Well, the radius is four inches in one radius. Okay, so radians, radians, revolutions, revolutions. I have inches per minute. I want to get in miles per hour. Let's get inches into miles. How many feet are in an inch? How many inches in a feet? Foot. 12 inches in one foot. And there's 5,280 feet in one mile. Okay, feet and feet cancel. Inches and inches cancel. So then we have miles per minute. I need miles per hour. I know there are 60 minutes in one hour. All right, so 3,300 times two times five times four times 60 divided by 12 hit equals divided by 5280 hit equals. Somewhere around 100, a little less than 100. What do we get? Medora is too scared to give an answer. Of course, she's the only one actually inputting something into her calculator. 78.5. I'll go with that. The planet Jupiter, where people get more stupider. All right. A radius of 43,000 miles makes one revolution every 10 hours. Okay? So if one revolution every 10 hours, we want to find the speed in miles per hour. Well, we got to change it to radians now. How many radians? 2 pi radians in one revolution. Now I want to get rid of my radius. Well, I know my radius of that planet is 43,000 miles in that one radius. So radians and radians cancel. Now I have miles per hour. There we go. So take, well, 10 goes into 43,000, 4,300 times. So 4,300 times 2 times pi. Round it to the nearest integer, which is nearest whole number in this case. Lucas, what'd you get? 27,000 Okay. I don't hear any arguments, so that's what we're going with. 
All right. Now, an angle in standard position, terminal side is 0 0.9, negative 9, negative 9. So it's like that. So we're in the third quarter, right? So it's negative 9, negative 9. What's 9 times 9? So 81 plus 81, and then we're taking the square root of that. Because it's c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Okay? So it's the square root of 162, which is the square root of 81, square root of 2, which is 9 square root of 2. So our hypotenuse must be 9 square root of 2. Okay? What's the sign? Well, the sign is always the opposite side, and the opposite side is where the <coughs> origin is, or the the angle's where the origin is. So the opposite side is negative 9. The hypotenuse is 9 square root of 2. 9's cancel. Multiply top and bottom by square root of 2. So it's negative square root of 2 over 2. Cosine. Well, it's negative 9 over 9 square root of 2, right? So it should be the same exact answer. Negative square root of 2 over 2. What's the tangent? Opposite over adjacent. Negative 9 divided by negative 9. Positive 1. Cosecant. Cosecant goes with sine. What's the reciprocal of that? So it's 9 square root of 2 over negative 9. The 9's cancel, so you get negative square root of 2. The secant is cosine, but since sine and cosine are the same, secant and cosecant will be the same. Negative square root of 2. And cotangent. What's the reciprocal of tangent? 1. What's the reciprocal of 1? One? 1. All right. Now you look at your unit circles. Where is the sine negative 5 over 6? Now you could do it this way. Go down pi over 6 this way to 11 pi over 6. And what's the sign at 11 pi over 6? Neg negative 1 half. Now, otherwise you could go coterminal angles and add 2 pi to this, which would make 11 pi over 6. So it would be the same thing. Okay? The sine of 7 pi over 6, that's right on your unit circle. What do you get? Negative 1 half there as well. Okay? What's the tangent of 60? Well, at 60 degrees, you have the point 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Tangent is sine square root of 3 over 2 over cosine 1 half. Multiply both the top and bottom by 2, and you get square root of 3. Negative 11 pi over 6. Well, if you go negative 11 pi over 6, if you add 2 pi to that, which is 12 pi over 6, you get the cotangent at pi over 6, correct? Cotangent at pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. Cotangent is si cosine over sine, x over y. Okay, so it's square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. So if we multiply both of them by 2, you get square root of 3. Okay, now inverses. Remember, cosine is quadrants 1 and 2. Tangent and sine is quadrants 1 and 4. Okay? So, where is the cosine square root of 3 over 2 on your unit circle in quadrants 1 or 2? At how many degrees? Where on your unit circle? 30 degrees. Okay? Simply 30 degrees. Where is the tangent square root of 3? Well, I could just look up here and go, well, the tangent was square root of 3 at 60 degrees. Where is the tangent square root of 3? At 60 degrees. Now, you go, well, yeah, you had that up above, but how would I figure that out otherwise? Okay? Well, they're just going to ask you, um, it's either going to be square root of 3 over 3 is a difficult one, or just square root of 3. Okay? So you have to just look at sine over cosine for tangent. 
Where is the sine over the cosine equal to square root of 3? Well, it's going to be square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. That's square root of 3. If you get sine is 1 half over, and these are backwards right now, where I have them written out. This is just square root of 3. If you have sine is 1 half, cosine is square root of 3 over 2. If you do all the manipulation of it, that will get you square root of 3 over 3. Okay, so this is 60 degrees, and this is 30 degrees. Nope, that's backwards. This is at 60 degrees, and this is at 30 degrees. Okay, where is the sine zero at? Not at, oh, it is at zero degrees. Yes, sine zero at zero. Tangent of alpha equals three sevenths. We're on to one decimal place. Use your calculator. So how do you get this? Well, you got to get your angle alone, which moves the tangent to the other side. When you move the tangent to the other side, it becomes the inverse tangent. So you push second tangent of three sevenths. What's the inverse tangent of three sevenths? 43.2. 23.2. All right, exact value of all six trig functions. So to find the hypotenuse, you square this, square this, you get five. So this is square root of five. So the sign is opposite over hypotenuse, one over the square root of five, can't leave square root of five on top, bottom I mean. So it's square root of five over five. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, 2 over square root of 5. Can't leave it like that. Multiply top and bottom by square root of 5. So you get 2 square root of 5 over 5. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, 1 half. Secant is a reciprocal of cosine. So it's square root of 5 over 2. You take the reciprocal of this first thing. Cosecant is a reciprocal of sine, which is square root of 5 over 1, or just square root of 5. And cotangent is adjacent over opposite, which is 2 over 1, which is 2. Solving the triangle. If we know this is 1.76 and this is 4.08, okay, how do we find A? Well, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out A, okay? Or we could use figuring out angles and trig, but let's just use the Pythagorean theorem. 4.08 squared plus a equals a squared plus 1.76 squared. I don't know what 4.08 squared is off the top of my head, but I bet it's 16 point like 64. Equals a squared plus 1.76 squared. Three point what? Three point one. <coughs> if we subtract, we get thirteen point three four equals a squared and take the square root. Was a equal? Three point six eight. Okay, finding a. Angle A, the cosine of angle A equals 1.76 over 4.08, adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? So, we move the cosine to the other side to figure out what angle A is. So, it's the inverse cosine of 1.76 over 4.08. So, if you do that, what do you get for A? to the nearest hundredth. What do we get? Seventy something? Sixty-four point four five. Okay. So this would be twenty-five point five five for B. How did I get that just off the top of my head? Because the angles all add up to 180. If we use 90 of it up here, these two share 90. Okay, so you just subtract from 90. 
Okay, if we're in quadrant four, down here somewhere, okay, and the cosine is one over six, cosine is adjacent, six is the hypotenuse, how do I figure out this number here? How do I figure that number out over there? Pythagorean theorem. 36 minus 1 is 35, so this would be the square root of 35. Okay? So you get the square root of 35 over 6, and it is negative. Why is it negative? Sine is negative. We're going down here for y value. And sine's a y value, so sine is negative in quadrant number four. Sine of 300. Looking on your unit circle again. What's the sine of 300? Negative square root of 3 over 2. Sine of 8 pi over 3. That's not on our unit circle. Negative 8 pi over 3. On our unit circle, we add by 2 pi. Well, if we add... 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi, we get negative 2 pi over 3. Let's add another 6 pi over 3, and we get 4 pi over 3. What's the sign of 4 pi over 3? Negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay? Sign of 5 pi over 6, it's on the unit circle for you. What do you get? 1 half. Cosine there is negative square root of 3 over 2. So then sine over cosine, 1 half over negative square root of 3 over 2. Multiply both by 2. You get 1 over negative square root of 3. Can't leave square root of 3 on the bottom. Multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. You get negative square root of 3 over 3. Cosecant, flip over the sine, you get 2. Secant, flip over the cosine, so 2 over square root of 3, can't leave square root of 3 on the bottom. So it's 2 square root of 3 over 3, with a negative in front of it. And cotangent is cosine over sine, so it's square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. Multiply them both by 2, and this is negative, so you get negative square root of 3. Is the cosine of 150 the opposite sign as the cosine of 30? Cosine of 150 is negative square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2. Are they equal? Yes, they are. Because this is negative square root of 3 over 2. And this is the negative of square root of 3 over 2. So since they're both negative square root of 3 over 2, they work. All right, that's the 31 questions that you'll see on the test. Practice test is out there. You have an hour to work on it. Yep.